Welcome to the Moving Mailboxes and EV video tutorial. I'm Chris Langevin from the Enterprise Vault technical support team, and I'm going to walk you through how to move a mailbox from one Exchange server to another when that mailbox is being archived by EV. There are four major parts to moving an archive-enabled mailbox, and therefore this video is broken into four segments, each containing a combination of exposition and demonstration of the steps in a simple lab environment using EV1002 and Exchange 2010 on Windows 2008 R2. Some steps may vary slightly based on the version of Exchange or Windows that you're using. The goal here is to familiarize you with the basics of what an EV administrator should be thinking about when moving mailboxes to a new Exchange server. It is certainly not an exhaustive treatise on all considerations and contingencies, especially for large, complex, or exotic environments. The video has a companion article in our knowledge base, which you should refer to for a more detailed treatment of the whole procedure, as well as specific instructions for versions of Exchange and Windows not shown. Part 1 is about the permissions EV needs to have on Exchange. When bringing a new Exchange server into your archiving environment, the first thing you should do is verify that the Vault Service account has all the required permissions to it. An easy way to check this is to run EV's Deployment Scanner tool. On the second page, Enter the name of the new Exchange server and click Add. You can next on through the remainder of the screens. The deployment scanner will test whether the required permissions have been set. Since you're watching this video, we can assume that they haven't been, and the deployment scanner shows us as much. So let's set the permissions on the new server. We'll do it the PowerShell way, which works on Exchange 2007 and later. If you're still using Exchange 2003, then you can't use PowerShell for Exchange, and you're going to use Exchange System Manager to assign these permissions. The instructions for that are linked in the article. Now, on with the PowerShell. The setEVpermissions.ps1 PowerShell script is on your EV installation media in the PowerShell scripts folder. Copy it to the Exchange server and run it using the Exchange Management shell. The syntax is pretty simple. Just make sure you're in the right directory and then dot slash set ev exchange permissions dot ps1. The only argument is for the user, which is the vault service account, and it needs to be in the domain slash user format as shown. The results screen will show you the permissions that were applied, and there's a list of them linked in the article as well. With that taken care of, we can go back to the EV server and run the deployment scanner again. This time the Exchange server passes with flying colors, so let's move along. Part 2 is all about the EV system mailbox. Every Exchange server that EV archives needs to have an EV system mailbox, so let's create one for our brand new Exchange server. Make sure it's a dedicated mailbox. We don't want to reuse the one for the Vault service account or Exchange's built-in system mailbox. This should be a standalone mailbox just for EV to use on this Exchange server. Again, the mailbox should reside on the new server, so specify an appropriate database if necessary. Try to ignore the irony of this option and just click on Buy. Click on New to accept these settings and create the mailbox. Once the mailbox is created, we need to give the Vault service account the right to send messages using it. So let's open the Exchange Management shell and grant the permission via PowerShell. The command is add ad permission. The first parameter is called identity, which is the mailbox on which we want to grant the permission. We'll give it the name of the EV system mailbox we just created. The next parameter is called user, which is the user being granted the permission to the mailbox. This is going to be the Vault service account, and we need to prefix it with the domain. 
The next set of parameters defines which kind of rights we are granting, so copy it exactly from the screen here or from Chapter 2 of the EV Install and Configure Guide. Then hit Enter and make sure the command succeeds. Just to verify that we got all the permissions right, let's go back to the EV server and use Outlook to log on to the EV system mailbox as the Vault service account. Use the Control Panel's mail applet to add a new mail profile. The Username field should contain the system mailbox that we want to open. If you can successfully send a message from this mailbox using the Vault Service account, then all is well with the permissions and we're ready to move on to the next step. Part 3 is where we add targets and tasks and enable sync and migration mode. Now we can add the server as an Enterprise Vault target. In the Vault Admin console, expand targets all the way down to Exchange Server. And right click to add a new one. Run through the wizard to add the server. When you're prompted to select the system mailbox, make sure to select the one you just created for this server. The wizard will automatically create an archiving task to process this exchange server. We want EV to recognize the moved users mailboxes on this new server and hook them up to their existing archives. To do this, we need to use a registry option that makes EV compare the legacy MBXDN attribute of the mailboxes that it finds on the new server against the EV database so that we can see if they correspond to any existing archives. It's basically a way for EV to track the mailboxes as they move across Exchange servers. So, let's open up RegEdit and navigate on down to the EV key located at HKey Local Machine, Software, WoW 6432 node, KVS, Enterprise Vault. Then let's open the subkey named Agents. Make a new D word called Sync in Migration Mode. For moving mailboxes, the value should be set to 1. This setting won't take effect until the archiving task is restarted, so let's go take care of that. And now we are officially ready to start moving some users' mailboxes. In part 4, we finally get to move a user and synchronize his hidden message. Let's move a user and watch what happens to him. We'll move the user Robert Stadler from a database on the MBX01 Exchange server to his new home on the MBX02 Exchange server. The move completes successfully, and we can see that the mailbox has indeed moved to MBX02. Meanwhile, on the user's workstation, we can inspect the EV hidden message and see that EV still lists the user as belonging to the old MBX01 server. To check the hidden message, we open Outlook and select any of the Enterprise Vault toolbar buttons while holding down Control and Shift. Click on Vault Information, and a screen appears showing EV settings for the mailbox. Scroll down to the section with the hidden message 
titled ipm.note.enterprisevault.settings. Then look for a setting called Mailbox Server. EV is still showing the mailbox as belonging to the old server, MBX01. That's because EV hasn't figured out yet that the mailbox has moved. So let's head over to the EV server and see if we can get it to notice the change. EV finds out about and adapts to mailbox moves through a combination of the provisioning task and the archiving task that synchronizes the mailbox. Since both of these usually run on a schedule, it's not strictly necessary to run them manually like we're going to do. You can just wait and it'll happen automatically and reflect the changes. However, for the sake of demonstration, let's make those changes show up a little faster. Run the provisioning task in normal mode, which will query Active Directory and record the mailbox's new location in EV's database. Once the task is finished processing and is back in the running state, we can write the changes back to the hidden message by synchronizing the mailbox. Now that the synchronization is finished, let's go back to the workstation and look at the updated hidden message. To read the new hidden message, we have to restart Outlook and go back into the Vault Information panel with the same Control-Shift click on any of the EV buttons. Scroll down to the section with the hidden message again. And our new mailbox server has been correctly changed to MBX02. This is because of the sync and migration mode registry setting we made, which caused DV to recognize the moved mailbox based on its legacy MBXDN attribute and connect it up to the existing archive. Once you have successfully moved all the mailboxes, don't forget to delete the sync and migration mode setting or set it to zero to deactivate it. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope the video and its companion article have helped you understand the process of moving archive-enabled mailboxes. If you have the time, please rate them over on the right side of the Knowledge Base page so we can tell how we're doing.